it's Marie from Pear Tree Paper Crafts. I'm back today with another layout. This one's called Hello and it's of my son. Um, we went to Fountains Abbey which is a National Trust property in the UK and we had a lovely day um, exploring. Uh, it's very outdoors and we love being outside together so this is him uh, exploring inside a tree um, that split very near, quite near the base so you can actually get in it. He's been a few times I've got pictures of him younger in that tree um, and I think it's maybe somewhere we're going to keep going back to just because it'd be nice to see him uh, grow and have it in the same position um, but I liked his smile in this picture. So I've decided to use some grey paper from um, the Boys Rule collection by Coco Vanilla Studio um, you already saw me there gut the back of the um, the darker grey for it to be an outline and then this I've trimmed down just ever so slightly I think I've taken just about a centimetre off it um, to be the central piece of paper and I'm just creating a bit of a mixed media background here um, using some white acrylic paint and a tool by Vicky Bootin. Um, I'm matting the photograph I want to put it on white um, I want it to stand out a little bit, but what I do here um, is just trim it so it's ever so slightly matted, a really thin matting. Um, in the past I would do really thick um, and I've changed my mind, I don't, I don't like doing it like that. I do do the uh, grey slightly thicker, um, but again not, not a massive matting. Uh, this is a sheet of paper from um, Echo Park and I'm just after that one word there that says lovable on it. Um, just cutting that out quickly. And I've also uh, chosen a an overlay from Kaisercraft um, for the photograph. I believe the overlays are designed for pocket pages, um, but I adhere them to, to photographs and just put them on normal um, pages. They do come with like a protective film on, so that's what you just saw me removing there. Um, I'm now just getting a few stamps out of my stash. What I want to do is put some extra texture on this background. I think I'm going to use um, stamps to do so. Um, but I am going to do it in a in a grey colour. Um, I tend to not go wild with stamp colour at all. But I was thinking that grey would work really well here. Um, not be too dark, not be too harsh. Um, just popping a piece of paper behind there. Um, so that I can print off the edge um, and not get it all over my mat and then all over my arms as well. Um, just placing it randomly round where I've done the white acrylic paint so that I can then place the photograph in the middle of there and you'll just see little bits of it popping out from behind the photograph. Um, chose that kind of dotty effect if you like, looks a bit like bubble wrap to go with a lot of the pattern papers I'm going to use later which are all spotty as well. Um, and now I'm just stamping some sentiments onto some grey card and then I'm going to cut them out. These are stamps again from Kaisercraft. Um, this star, you just see it off the bottom there, um, is really clever because it's solid uh, in the middle and then as it moves towards the edges of the star it becomes it's made up of lots of dots and they become further apart as they come to the edge so it sort of fades out towards the edge which I really like the effect of. Um, sometimes I will get to the end of a layout and wish I'd done this step and put that mixed media on there um, and, and put those different effects and sometimes I just forget I get so caught up in finding my papers and choosing embellishments that I forget to do that so did it on this one this one's a little arrow I'm just cutting out um, I think in the end I choose not to use that on the layout itself but uh, time to adhere it down the acrylic paint has dried um, I'm sticking loads of loads and loads of sticky tape on here because um, I don't want it to come off and the page because of the acrylic paint has now gone wobbly I don't know about you I find a real problem with that um, and it does it does annoy me but I don't know what the solution is so it's not too bad it's not too wobbly but it is um, a little bit on the wobbly side there 
I think the dark grey and the light grey stand out really well against each other um, and I'm really pleased with how the contrast is working on there. So I've chosen this word hello to be my title. Quite often I use my Cricut to um, cut titles but this particular layout I decided to use a chipboard that I already had um, in my stash. It was a bit tricky to get out of there, to pop things out with my Vokey tool. Um, but it just sits nicely at the bottom corner. Um, and then I'm going to start just choosing, I mean these are scraps that I'm using, uh, just out of my pockets that I have. I save all my scraps in Ikea bags, the Ziploc ones. Um, so I have a bag of green and I have a bag of yellow and a bag of orange and etc. Just to keep it so that I actually make myself use them. I used to just keep them all in one big tub and I was finding that I was just looking at the tub and going, no, I'm not going through that today, I can't be bothered. Um, but now I've got them in bags, I'm finding I'm using an awful lot more of my scraps up. Because you don't need, um, for this particular layout and the way I'm using the pattern papers, you don't need a, a large sheet. Um, so I've got a couple of 6x6 six six pads there that I've just got in my stash. Um, that I'm just cutting little strips off and using and I've done some little tabs up at the top there as well um, I'm just layering it up and seeing all the different colours working together which I really like so now just picking through a few more pieces decided to put a couple of vertical pieces of pattern paper in as well and just flicking back through, seeing if there are any more that I fancy adding. There were a couple that I liked, but they had slightly different colours on and I didn't want to introduce any more different colours. I wanted to stick to the yellow, the orange, sorry, the yellow, the green and the grey on this layout. So now I'm just inking the edges of everything going on the sheet. Um, it makes for a very, very um, softened look, I think. And I think it makes it much, much easier to um, kind of piece them all together. It doesn't matter if one's a bit wider than the other and you intended them, them all being the same size I do think it really softens the effect so now I've got my um, revolution out from quick cuts and I'm just using a set of Sizzix um, dies little thinlets um, that are all kind of frames and banners and arrows and hearts and things which I love and just using some craft paper some some brown craft paper to cut out a few of those shapes that I really liked and I fancied using. Um, I'm now pulling out a few more stamps. I'm going to stamp a few more sentiments um, to add onto um, the layout. I'm going to do them onto this grey card using again grey ink. I've got hearts, excuse my head there. I've got hearts, I've got little banners, I've got something that says hello, a little camera all sorts of different things. I'm using um, Stampin' Up ink here, um, again in a grey colour, it's their grey. I'm, I'm not a big fan of stamping in black, um, I find it a bit harsh um, and again just in keeping with this layout, keeping it grey. Um, when I've stamped all these sentiments and the things I've chosen, um, give them a quick clean off with baby white, uh, pop them all back and then I'm going to fussy cut them um, to add as embellishments around a photograph. I've always had lots and lots of stamps. Um, I used to have lots of character stamps, now I go for more sentiments and um, the project life sets and things like that and maybe some alphabets as you can see from the, the kind of ones I've got there. Um, and I knew I liked them, never knew how to use them and then kind of thought, well, you know, put them around the edge and use them as your own little embellishments. Um, now I've learned how to use embellishments a little bit better. That little camera that I'm cutting out there 
um, has appeared on lots of different layouts that I've done actually um, because I really like it and it just keeps popping its popping itself onto different ones. Um, I've I've taught myself quite a lot recently. I've been watching lots of YouTube videos, which kind of inspired me to make my own. Um, I was injured a little while ago trying to teach my my son how to ice skate, um, and unfortunately had a bit of a fall, broke two bones in my wrist, my coccyx. Um, my T11 vertebra and a rib. Um, so I've been out of action for quite a while. So I've been doing, uh, setting up my own blog and, and things like that on the computer, um, just to try and keep my mind active while uh, my body couldn't be. Now I'm feeling a little bit better now. I'm able to sit for a small amount of time and do bits and pieces. So. That's why you might see this video chopping and changing because I think this was recorded in about five different sections. I'm just choosing a few more bits of paper here that I've decided I want some extra um, variation on the layout. And um, I'm also going to use my happy jig. I don't know if you've seen a happy jig, but it's a pegboard with different size pegs and you wrap wire around the pegs to make different shapes. Um, lots of patterns available online. This one I'm making here is a double heart. Um, you get one, no, you get three little bits of wire with the kit. I just bought some more from Amazon. Um, this colour here is like a almost a rosy gold kind of colour, um, maybe coppery, you might think. And all you have to do is wind it round and then peel it off really, really carefully. And then on most of them, it gives you the instructions on how to do the last little bit so that you end up with um, like a paper clip end somewhere on it, and you can. Um, attach it to your layout. Here I go then, a bit more inking, just doing those last few pieces that I've just cut out, the different, slightly different shade of yellow and the green, um, and a bit more grey. I think those, the yellow there and that grey are um, simple stories, some of their basics paper. Um, on one side it is zigzags and on the other side it's dotty. I prefer the dotty. Um, the zigzag is a bit migraine inducing, Thankfully I don't get migraines, but my husband will not look at that paper. He doesn't like it at all, so it's, uh, so it's quite uncomfortable to look at. Um, but I prefer the, the dotty anyway, I think I bought it for the dotty. Now I'm just using my craft knife and my scissors to cut um, tab ends onto all the strips of paper. Because I left them straight, and then as I've looked at them behind the photograph, I've decided I want a bit more interest there, and instead of that, I'm going to, instead of having them straight, I'm going to cut them. So I cut some of them diagonally, cut some of them into tabs, and then I use a circle punch in a few minutes to, um, instead of having it um, straight, I'm going to have it as a slightly curved end, which I quite like the look of. Here comes my circle punch, just got to get it out of my drawer. And then I realised I accidentally cut this piece of paper there, the, the green spotty one, that I shouldn't have cut that one. That one was for behind the photograph. Um, but I just trim those those bits off and, and re-ink it. There we go, not a problem. Um, I'm not someone who measures things um, when I scrapbook. Um, I've seen some people on their videos who do. They like to measure and they like to be very exact and make sure all their mats are the same size, etc. I I don't work like that. I tend tend to look by eye. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out, and sometimes it goes wrong, and you have to start again, or you've cut something too short or too long. Or um, but generally speaking, it works quite well for me, and I prefer to work in that way. So again, just inking those ends of the um, the tabs, and then I have a go at kind of laying them out on the page where I think they might go. I think it's important when you're scrapbooking to have a little bit of faith. Um, sometimes I have no idea where I'm going with the layout. Sometimes I've got a really clear vision of what I want. Sometimes I don't know where I'm going. Um, and I think it's important sometimes just to think, well, if you don't know where you're going, just have a little bit of faith and, and get some, get the paper down, get some embellishments on there, mix up those pattern papers um, and, and see what works. 
Um, I was going to just adhere them all to the sheet and then I decided actually that would probably be a little bit dangerous and probably not work out exactly as I wanted it to. So I decided then to just stick each individual one to the back of the photograph um, and then I could make sure they were stuck out exactly the right amount on both sides. Um, some of them I allowed to stick out both ways, some only stick out one way, some um, in a few minutes you'll notice me, I cut them so that they stick out one half and then stick out the other half. That works really well as well. Um, here I go with chopping them and changing the cuts on the ends and it's fair to say that I'm not a speed scrapper. I know some people can produce um, many layouts in a day um, when I'm fitting well and, and able to sit for extended periods of time I can do maybe three or four um, this particular one took a couple of hours to do I did one um, which is one of my other process videos um, which is a family picture I have um, only took uh, it took less than an hour to do so they vary depending on how much in terms of embellishments you do and in terms of how much um, paper work you actually do. If you mat a photograph and put pop a load of pre-bought embellishments on can be quicker. If you're cutting out all your own strips like this one or you're backing a cut file that's got lots of intricate shapes again that can take a, take a little while. Um, but that one I'm happy with how that works out and I make sure I fill my little gaps in. And then I'm just about ready to pop it on to the layout. Okay, I've got a couple more. Um, what I do do is I absolutely cover the back of it in double sided sticky tape because I think it's really important to make sure that none of those strips move because they're in exactly the right place. Um, I've just noticed as well as I put it down there, it's kind of made it's a narrow shape going sideways. I've just realised. Quite like that, it fits with the little arrows that we've got going on elsewhere. And then my hello, my little banners at the top. Um, I have not put any um, dimension on the photograph at all. Because there's so many strips of paper, it's kind of adding its own dimension. However, what I do do is I put dimension behind um, some of the extra embellishments that go on there. So the large star and some of the words have some um, dimension behind them. Come on, peel off all that double-sided sticky. I love the double-sided sticky with the finger lift. I obviously have my ATG gun as well, um, but the finger lift tape is brilliant. Um, you don't have to fight trying to pick up the edge because the, the um, backing paper is wider than the tape itself. Um, so you can easily get a finger under the edge to peel it off. Um, I've just tacked that um, overlay down just by putting some very tiny amounts of glue just underneath where the words are to enable that to sit down. Um, now just going around popping some foam on the embellishments. I've put a couple of little frames sticking out from behind the photograph. I love that word lovable. I think it just worked brilliantly. That needed a bit of extra dimension. And then we've got tabs up at the top. First two go on flat. The third one goes on with some dimension underneath it. Um, then a few more little hearts and things. I like my fine line of glue as well. It's the first glue pot I found that doesn't get um, dried up with glue because there's a needle that goes down and stops that happening. Um, and it gives you such a very fine line, well, what's its name? A very fine line of glue, which means it's very easy to put on smaller shapes without getting extra glue all over. Just popping that little heart thing on the corner there, but with a bit of dimension, stop it flopping over. And then I think there's just a couple more little extras to add on here. 
that one says you are loved there's that arrow again that I just can't find a space for I've tried it's just not gonna go on and then little heart tabs I like the brown on there um, this is that ticket that says you are awesome on it and I really hope to try and get this on there but unfortunately it just doesn't it doesn't feel right the love it's, it's roughly the same size as that lovable piece and that just makes it a little bit too big for me I've just got those last few embellishments to put on. I've got a few My Mind's Eye ones here. The little arrow says you are. And then uh, the turquoise one. I wasn't going to add that extra bit of colour, but I just wanted something that matched him with the zip on his coat. And his zip um, is uh, a, a turquoisey colour, so I decided to, to pop that on there. I'll try a word wonderful, then change my mind, take that back off. Um, and then I use these lovely um, enamel dot type stickers. They're not enamel dots. They're like half spherical gunmetal coloured um, balls, if you like. They work really, really well. I've got two sizes of them. I've got a large and a small. I've placed those all over. I move that number one now on and off with that sweet smiles can never make my mind up here comes a little bit of film strip from Tim Holtz just wanted something underneath the photograph at the bottom and then the very last thing that I add is the um, paperclip hearts that I made and I hook those around that word lovable and that's it thank you so much for watching hope to see you again soon and happy scrapping bye